welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today sees the return to the channel of the mighty Fistamafell, a brand new puzzle called Butterfly Effect. Um, and I think I can I can sort of see a butterfly. Are these a butterfly wing? Is that the left butterfly wing? And this is the right butterfly wing? And these are the sort of I don't, <laughs> the antenna that come out of the front of the butterfly? Perhaps it's um. I can also sort of see the Joker's face though in this. Uh, anyway, it's the brand new puzzle from The Great Man and this is what I get to do today and that is a rather lovely thing for me. Um, I'll read, the, read you the rules in just a moment or two. On a, on a more sombre note though, um, we do start with some sad news today. Um, Bremster, who many of you will know uh, from the Stoke community, an absolute, absolute doyen of the community, um, Bremster's father has passed away this morning. Um, so Bremster, Mark and I wanted to send our condolences to you. And I can tell you that later on, Mark Mark's video will include uh, Bremster's tribute puzzle to his dad. So, um, so look out for that. Um, now let's 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 change tack again. Let's let me talk about happier things. Um, where shall I start with? Where shall I start with happier things? I don't. I don't. I, I don't feel right just rushing into birthdays after a message like that. Let me talk about streaming. Um, Teji, Mark and I are going to be streaming the game Teji tomorrow night, uh, ten o'clock UK time. Um, we'd love to have your company for that. I can also tell you that Mark has suggested. Um, I, I've, down, I've started to download a game called Hogwarts Legacy today, which is a brand new Harry Potter game. If you've been watching the channel for any amount of time, you know that I, I read Harry Potter to my kids. Um, and um, and yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Harry Potter and I'm going to play this game Hogwarts Legacy. And Mark said, well, why don't you stream yourself playing it? And I thought, well, OK, I can try and do that. So assuming the download finishes in time and it's 72 gigabytes uh, large and my internet speed from my loft in Surrey is not the best. It's going to take something like six hours to download it. Assuming that finishes on time, assuming the early access, the sort of pre-release access works, I will try and stream a bit of Hogwarts Legacy uh, later on tonight, probably around 10 o'clock. Uh, keep an eye on our Twitter if you if you have any interest in this at all. Um, our Twitter is at Cryptic Cracking. And that might happen or it might not. Don't blame me if it doesn't. Um, other than that, what can I say? Let, let me do birthdays now. Um, Julia, you have turned the maximum size of a four cell killer cage today. <laughs> I know this because your boyfriend Moritz over in Germany wrote to us. Um, and Julia, I hope you're able to have a brilliant day today. Um, Sheldon, you've turned 25 today. I, oh, can I think of a quick... No, I can't think of a quick way of describing 25 in terms of Sudoku, uh, Sudoku rules. Um, but I gather you're having cake and nice wine today. Your partner Justice wrote to us and said that this is going to be on the menu. So I'm quite jealous about that. And then Zolly, you've turned 30 as well. Oh, I shouldn't say 30 as well. I should say the maximum size of a four cell killer cage. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Zolly. Um, and your friend Zolly. So your friend Zolly wrote to tell us that Zolly, it was... It was not, I don't think Zolly and Zolly are the same person. I don't think. It would be quite clever of Zolly if they were. Um, second Zolly, um, who would turn out to be the first Zolly as well. Well, let's see. Um, and then Justin, your wife Leanne wrote to us. Uh, Leanne was very organised. Most of the birthday requests we get at the very last minute, but Leanne wrote several weeks ago to say that it was your birthday today, Justin. And I gather you do watch the channel quite religiously. And for that, Mark and I are very grateful. So thank you for that. And we hope you have a great day today with, of course, lots of cake. Now, other news. This is a Fistamafell puzzle. Now, the, the, the present that we gave all our patrons over on Patreon for Christmas was the, the Fistamafell Sudoku hunt, which was an absolutely breathtaking sequence of puzzles. Um, now, one of the puzzles in that, in that hunt was called Ancient Wall. And Ancient Wall, Fistamafell described, uh, described it to me, he said, I don't think I could ever set a better puzzle than this. It is an absolutely astonishing piece of work. And we had uh, we had a, 
Well, Mark and I were thinking we could record a solve of it, um, either for our patrons or to put on the channel. But we're conscious that in doing that, Mark and I tested tested the Fist of Mafels hunt, so it would be very much a solve from memory, and that's not the sort of the the solving that we tend to, to do. So uh, we had an interesting email from Matt Boyack, and some of you may remember Matt because Matt Matt made a brilliant video for us on symmetry in Sudoku and girth symmetrical placement and. Uh, that's that's a video that's available for our patrons as well. It, it's an absolutely lovely and intelligent video. Anyway, Matt has made a video of how to solve Ancient Wall. And what I think we're going to do, because this puzzle deserves the widest possible audience, we're going to, we are going to put that video on the main channel in the coming days. So if you haven't had a chance to try Ancient Wall, you'll get a chance to try it and you can watch Matt solve, um, which is, uh, as usual, explained in his very, very um, sort of, uh, what's the right way of explaining it? Um, didactic, I want to say, but it's, it's just, it's, it, it, Matt's style is brilliant, and it's a brilliant video, and that's coming, coming soon on the channel, so look out for that. Other than that, it's just Jay Dyer's uh, Jay Dyer's hunt, uh, which was our January patron reward, another extraordinary hunt, and the following finished all of the puzzles correctly. Desi and Jordan, Claude Petrie, Rick Harrison, Scott Nakamura, CJ Richard, Brian Murphy, Matt Jenkins, Mark Wallace, Pink Anemone, Valentin Noyes, Harrison Stein, Amy Anderson, Steve Tradicio, I think, Carl, Carl Faust, Corey Bofill, uh, Ewan and Louise Mitchell, Steve and Jake Pal Paltiel, Mary Foster, and Ben Batera. I think it's Ben Batera. Uh, could be Butterer. No, but I prefer Batera. I hope that's right. <laughs> anyway, very well done, all of you. And la tomorrow will be the last day of J. Dyer, J, J. Dyer Hunt Completers. So after that, we'll be on to Glum Hippo's Hunt, um, which many of you have been enjoying. And well done to all those of you who've managed to solve that already. But now let's play Butterfly Effect by Fistamafel. These are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, digits uh, on a line between two circles. So you can see we've got these gray lines in the grid. Um, have to have values that lie strictly between the digits in the circled ends. So these are between lines. So imagine this square was a three and this square was a seven. Oh, I tried to type seven, managed to type eight. Let's use eight instead. Then we would know that the digits on the line have to be between three and eight. So they could be, they would have to be selected, selected from four, five, six, and seven. Uh, they can be, you know, we, we can, they can be in any order but they would have to be selected from those digits to lie between the values in the circled ends. And the cells on a purple line contain a set of non-repeating consecutive digits, but not necessarily in order. So these are often called Renban lines. Um, so let's say we worked out this square was a one, then we would know that this line, in order to contain a consecutive set of digits, it would have to have the digits one, two, and three on it, but we could do these in any order. So we could have the three and then the two, or the two and then the three, you takes your chances and makes your choice. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. We get a solitary given digit here, which is quite unusual. Um, now, hmm. Well, I'm not, I'm not seeing very much at all. I have to say it's a bit discombobulating. It's also incredibly symmetrical. It's in, it can't be completely symmetrical. No, okay, it's not completely symmetrical, but it's very nearly completely symmetrical. What by symmetrical I mean? Well, imagine. Oh, <laughs> that totally didn't work. I was trying to draw a line down the middle of column five in order to show you that. You know, if we reflect the grid around that line, it's it's ver there are only I think two places where we wouldn't get the same puzzle, and that's those two those two ren bands are not symmetrical about that line, but literally everything else is. 
So, right, so that let's start with the tip about symmetrical puzzles. If you have a, got a puzzle that's either, well, that, that's very substantially symmetrical, always remember when you find logic in one part of the grid, always look at the symmetrical counterpart. So if we, if we found logic that applied to this line here, we should definitely be trying to apply that same logic to this side here because it may well have the same logical considerations and allow us to do something. Now, hmm, I'm really not seeing very much here. I'm wondering if it's going to be some sort of mathematical trick. But that doesn't seem very possible. No, I think that's nonsense, actually. I've not got, there's no mathematics in the puzzle. So knowing that a three cell Ramban sums to a number divisible by three, I don't think is going to, I don't think that's going to matter. We've got two four cell rem bands. Right, let's think about the between lines then, because there's, well, <laughs> there is only one secret I know about between lines, and it's not a very profound one. So the secret I know about between lines is that you can never put ones and nines on the line, because if you do try and put a one or a nine on the line, because the one has to lie between the values on the end of the line. You'd have to you'd have to have a zero or a negative number in one of these, and that won't work within the confines of normal Sudoku. So, so maybe it's these two columns then, and where we put the the sort of extreme digits because we can't put ones and nines on the line. So those are not valid valid for the extreme digits. So we have to put one and nine into two of those five cells and two of those five cells. So let's, I love this fluorescent green color. It's so stark, isn't it? Um, now, wow, I mean that, well, the fact is there are, there are even spots here that don't even live on Ren bands. So, Um, I'm now thinking that that's not the trick. This is very, very strange, isn't it? That this... That this does anything. Can we do anything with the fact that that digit can't repeat? That digit's got to be on a Ren ban in box one because it can't repeat on its own Ren ban. So that digit... Oh, ah, okay. That is mildly interesting. I'm only going to award it the adjective. Well, I'm only going to award it the description mildly interesting, but at least that means there is a big sequence of numbers going on in box one. Uh, because whatever this is, oh, okay. Well, the other thing is it has to be middling. Right, okay, 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 okay. Yes, yeah, so... I think this digit might, maybe we get rid of the green just momentarily. I'm just going to make this green. Um, so by Sudoku, we know that the green can't repeat on its own purple line. We know it can't go there. So green lives in one of these cells, one of those three cells in box one on a different Renban. So the way I sort of feel this works is that this this digit, whatever it is, um, because because this Renban or those three cells there cannot be shared at all with the digits that are not green on this Renban. There must be how many seven? There must be seven cells. There must be seven continue con, um, seven consecutive digits in in these in these cells in in box one because imagine this was a five then we know five goes up in one of the green cells up here but whatever i put let's say i put four i can't well let's pay, say i put four six 
but you can see I can't put four and six because then there would be nothing consecutive with the five up here. I have to go one way or the other from the five. So let's go five, three, two, four, two, three, four, five on this one. Now this one, because it can't have four on it, is going to have to start a sequence from the from the other consecutive digit with five. So this is going to be six, six, seven, and eight. And then if we take the, the two rem bands together, you can see that within box one, we have a seven cell sequence of two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's a little bit, a little bit weird, but I can see that this digit lies in the center of a seven cell sequence. So that digit, Yes, in, in other words, because these three digits are either higher or lower than that digit, this digit's got to be four, five, or six, hasn't it? Because if, it, if we did try and put three in here, and then three in here, one of these rem bands would contain a sequence of two, one, zero, and that's not going to work. Right, so this is four, five, or six ah, now. That six is in the wrong place to be useful. I want it to be up there. Um, right. So actually, I think this is about these two digits, isn't it? Because. Yeah, OK, this is the way to think about this. What are these two digits capable of being? Well, they aren't capable of being very much at all. If this sequence, if this seven cell sequence started as, as a very low, the lowest point it could, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If it starts one higher, it would be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If it starts one higher than that, it would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It can't be anything else. So these two digits have to be from one, two, eight, and nine, but that digit, remember, cannot be extreme so that is one on because it's on the between line if it's one or nine we need to put zero in one of those so that's two or eight which means that is extreme ah this is right this is really clever this is really clever yeah 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 i've got this right so, so now these digits remember they're a sequence but what we've just worked out is that there is an they this cannot be the one nine pair this cannot these cannot both be one nine so the seven cell sequence that we know exists within box one is not two three four five six seven eight because if it was this would be a one nine pair and this this between line would be broken so this sequence is either one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, with this being an eight, nine pair, or it's nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and this is a one, two pair, with this being the two and this being the one. So this is extreme. And if this is extreme, it goes there. Oh, that is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Okay, the great man is doing it again, isn't he? That is, that's absolutely sick. Yeah, okay. So think, let's think this through. I, I often find these puzzles very difficult um, because we're sort of working with two versions. You know, it'd be, it'd be a bit easier if I just said, let's guess these are one and two to see the implication. If this was a one, two pair, then what number do you have to put into one of those circles? Well, obviously it's that digit because we've got to frame the two with something. And if, if this was nine, eight, you could see that the digit we'd need then would be a nine because we need to frame the eight. And where can the framing occur? Well, the framing has to occur. This, this has to be the extreme digit. That acts as the frame for this one because this is ruled out from being that digit by our old friend Sudoku. So that digit is a one or a nine. These two digits are the same. Uh, no, 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 no. I'll make them blue. The red, the red didn't sit didn't sit right with my eye there. Um, 
So, the, oh, I see. Right, now this digit is down here on a three cell rem band and it's extreme. So this rem band, oh, Mark would be pleased with this, is either, is one of those two things. I can't quite believe I, my fingers hit the keyboard in the right place there, but that's either a one, two, three triple if this is one, or it's a seven, eight, nine triple if this is nine. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, right, so, so now, right, so now this digit is more interesting than it used to be. This one has sort of, I don't know, it's gone to charm school and it's learnt how to be um, affable at parties because green now it doesn't live in blues space because this is a midly digit and these are extreme digits so green lives in one of these spaces which seems to suggest that those are no longer green and green lives in the corner where it's not a three so it doesn't get a song so this this is the midly digit that this is oh but this isn't five anymore is it no this isn't five because if this was five we know that five would be in the middle of the sequence and the sequence would be two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Right, so this is four or six. Uh, no, <laughs> still, still the six doesn't do it. Um, what about that digit? that digit is so that right okay let's give this i'm going to give this digit its own color as well um make it orange for a moment because that digit does live on that line as well so that digit's in here look in one of those cells um and the reason obviously we know if, if this is a one two pair because this will be a one two three triple it's obviously got the two on it so that's why i think we can color this with without too much controversy so by Sudoku, this digit, oh, it's, no, it's obvious now. Okay, I've got it again. Right, so this digit lives on here, but but this digit is the digit that bounds it on one side, isn't it? Imagine, again, imagine this is a one, two. This is a one, there's a two on the ren band. So the ren band is two, three, four. But if this is eight, nine, this is nine, this is eight, seven, six. Um, right, so does that digit have to be four or six then? I think that's, I think that's what we're learning here. I'm being a bit slow about this, but let me try and work this out. If this is one, two, this is one, this is two, three, four, but this is one, two, three. So that cannot be a two or a three. So the two, three would go here. And this needs a four on it in this case, which would have to go there. But if this was eight, nine, this would be nine. There's an eight on the rem band. So this is eight, seven, six, but there's an eight and a seven here. So this becomes seven, eight. So we're not, and that becomes a six then. So we do get a four, six pair, which might do something over there. We'll check that in a moment, but I just want to think about this digit. Do I know where this digit, or can I use this six somehow? This six must be here for a reason. Um. don't see how to do this actually um if this was four and this was four and that was one two three then this would be five six seven and that would be the six and that would be a five seven but that doesn't seem to be problematical and then anyway that could be the one two three um oh, 
I'm not sure what I'm meant to be seeing here, I have to say. Okay, maybe I am meant to look across here then. So I now know that that cell... Oh, okay, it's a symmetrical puzzle, isn't it? So I need to check this cell, and does that work the same way in this box, which is almost... No, it's... It, uh... No, it's not the same, actually. Sorry, it's not the same. It's not the same. This cell doesn't it doesn't necessarily live on a Ren band in in box three because the symmetry does it, symmetry's broken, hasn't it? So that cell that cell either well, it's either on a Ren band. Or it's there. Now, <laughs> how on earth are we meant to know? Um, I don't see. Okay, and I, well, I suppose if it's there, it's also down here. And the, well, the logic then would be quite similar, but only if this is an extreme digit. If it's extreme, it's not the same as that extreme digit, is it? Actually, that's not an extreme digit. That's very, very odd. That's very odd. Something right. So something's broken in the symmetry here that I'm now worried. Hang on. Let me just think about this for a second or two. No. Yeah. Okay. No. Obvious. No. It is different. It is different because I was thinking about. I'm thinking about different things. I'm mixing things up in my brain. So I'm getting confused between this digit and this digit because what I was doing was I was looking at these and I was wondering whether these could be extreme. What I should probably have been wondering is, well, they couldn't be four and six, but I was noting that if they were one and nine, I could see they were different from the one and nine here. But let's come back to this. Can this be a one nine pair? And the answer is no. Because if this was, let's let's make them one, it's going to be the same if we, this becomes one, two, three, doesn't it? But how do we fill these digits in now? This has to be a two, three, four triple, but we've got five digits in this column now that are selected from, um, or five cells in the column that are selected from four different digits, which is going to necessitate a repeated digit. So... Yeah, but this is all predicated anyway on this digit living in this square in this box, which it might not do. So I think I'm getting sidetracked here. It would be, would it be more useful? If it, if it did live on the other Renban, let's try that for an idea. If this does live on this Ren band, it's going to be in one of these two places. And then, then we're going to get the same thing, aren't we, that we've got over here. I.e., we're going to have a seven cell sequence in this box. Which means these squares have to be from one to eight and nine we know this square couldn't be one or nine which means this square needs to be the other side of it now what does that mean so this this feel uh, this feels to me like it's correct because you can see that this we're going to have lots of either low digits or high digits on the left in, in these extreme positions. And then we're going to have the opposite on the right. So why... Um, 
Well, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong. I've just realized that this doesn't work. Good grief. Okay, this is really complicated, but it, this is another, this is a classic Fistemafel. So everything, everything that works so beautifully over here causes it to fail over here because, because once you get this almost extreme digit on this, you need, you need to put this digit, which is the, the actual extreme digit, in one of those and you can't do it. Oh, it's so clever. So it's totally, it's totally the opposite. The small difference in the symmetry leads to the logic on this side just being completely turned upside down. Right, so let me let me try and explain this. Um, I th hopefully, I'm sure, am I sure I've explained that well already? I'm not sure I've explained that well already. So let me try again. If we're saying that this digit is on the Remban, which is what happened over here with green, then we know that this selection here can have one of the consecutive digits with this but not both because if it had both consecutive digits this 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 other remban couldn't exist in other words this gray digit lives in the middle of a seven cell sequence which means it's got all the options it had on this side again now we know that this cannot be a one nine pair because that cannot be a one or a nine so we know that either the seven cell sequence is one two three four five six seven or it's nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. And that means these two digits are either a two and a one, or they're an eight and a nine. But if this is eight, this has to be framed by the between line, which requires a nine on it, but that's nine stops that happening. If this is a two, we need a one to frame it, and that will be a one, and that stops that happening. It's just ridiculously clever. It is ridiculously clever. It is. It's an exquisite way of exploiting a relationship between the rules of Renban and the rules, the between line rules. It's just stunning. Now, but, but what does this mean? So that means that this digit, because it can't exist on this Renban, by Sudoku it does go there. So it does go down here. And now I thought I thought this couldn't be extreme. It can't be extreme because then I get a problem in this column. So this digit not only cannot be ones or nines, it's not fours or sixes. So it does, it's still got loads of options. It could be two, three, five, seven or eight. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is now getting even more complicated. If that's two and that's two, no, how could that be two ever? No, it can, no, it can't, no. No, it can be. I was thinking about where one where one would go in this box. But one can go on this Renban line, can't it? Because there is a two on it. So this would, yeah, okay. So if two, if this is two, therefore this is two. Now I've got to think about where one goes in this box. Now it cannot go here. We know that because that's in, on the between line. And it can't go on this one because that would need a two on it then. So the one goes on here. So this is one, three, four, but that's going to break this again. Yeah, that's weird. So it's it still breaks if I put two on it, I think, because these squares down here, well, they have, they have to be selected from one, two, three, and four, because it's a three cell sequence that's got a two on it. And you can see in this column now, I've got too many digits from the same set. So that, I presume, must also be the case for eight. If that's eight, that's eight. Nine has to be on here. 
So this is going to be 8, 9, 6 and 7. But this is going to be from 6, 7, 8 and 9 as well. And again, we get the same problem. We can't get a 5 onto the sequence to break it up. So this is not. So this is now 3, 5 or 7. I'm going to try 3. If 3, we could get to 3 in the corner doing this. If that's 3, it still doesn't work. I can't, why can't my head get round this? This just, 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 it's the same problem again. It's the problem with the sort of, oh, it's obvious. Oh, good grief, man. You are so slow sometimes. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Right. The way to think about this, I think, so that it doesn't completely break your brain, which is what it's been doing with mine, is to think about these digits as a set. Yeah, that's that's much that's that's quite elegant. They have to be an eight cell sequence, don't they? Because whatever this digit is, once it gets transported here off the Renban, we know that 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 four cell sequence there is a sequence of four consecutive digits. Ah, uh, no, I see what's going on. This is a sequence of four consecutive digits, and this is a sequence of four consecutive digits. So. So that means that this digit, oh, it's so clever. I'm just double checking my own, my own idea. Well, it means this digit, I think, has to be one, five or nine. Because if this was, say, a three, it's impossible to find two consecutive four cell sequences because one and two, you know, can't exist anywhere in the box, basically. Have I made that clear? If, yeah, I mean, if this is a, if this is a three, then we know that these, these eight digits are broken down into two sequences of four digits each. So where can you put one and two? You can't put those on either. They'd need a three. So the, the, the fact is this has to be one, five or nine. It's on the between line. So it is five. That means this is not five. This is a medium digit. I think this is going to still be problematic though. There's five, five on the between line is the least profitable thing we could ever put onto it because obviously these circles have maximum flexibility now to be I mean, they could be four and six. Per, no, they couldn't actually be four and six, but they you get the idea. They could be very, very middly. But this is three or seven. So this is three or seven, which means three or seven is down here. But I've got to avoid the same problem. I'm just going to work this through. If this is three, Then we know that this is extremely high, don't we? Because it's the top side of five and this is the bottom side of five. So this would have to be one, two and four. But I'm worried, have I broken this again? No, right, this has a five on it. Ah, right, so we just get the degree of freedom we need. Oh, this is, it's just brilliant. It's quite brilliant, this. Uh, it's quite complicated, but let me try and explain. So if this is three, we know three comes down here onto this line. Now that means the options, if we pure, if we think about everything we could put on this line, it's got to be a digit that's within, you know, we can only go two away from three in either direction as a maximum. So the maximum scale of digits we've got here is one, two, three, four, five. But what digits do we have to put on this? Because remember, that is a four cell sequence. And because we've got five here and we've got three here, we now know this is the low side of five. It's like the low German whispers digit. So it's got to be from one, two, three and four. Now, if this was seven, of course, that would be seven. 
this is still 5, so that has to be 6, 7, 8, 9. This would be 1, 2, 3, 4. But then we'd have 7 down here on this line, and these would be from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it, it's symmetrical. The point is that if you look at that quintuple, there is a 5 on it down here. So now, now I've got to do a load of deleting while I think about what the options are now. Because this is, well, this is either very specifically 3, 4, 5, or it's very specifically 7, 6, 5. It definitely has 5 on it for sure, which means 5 is definitely on this line for sure. Because, um, hang on, hang on, what's going on now? Have I broken this? That digit can't be four or six. Ah, <laughs> this is crazy. I'm uh, sorry, and the reason I'm su suddenly worried is I've now forced a five onto this tiny little Remban which means it's got to have a 4 or a 6 on it because it must be a consecutive sequence. Well, it now can't have 4 and 6 on it because that cell definitely can't be 4 and 6. So if it goes up, this will be a 5-6 pair and that will be a 7. And if it goes down, this will be a 4-5 pair and that will be a three. So this is a three seven pair now. Good grief. So this is the opposite to this. <laughs> um, I know this has got five on it. So if this was three, four, five, that's going to be seven. And this will be seven, six, five. I've got to give this a different colour, I think. I think that would be sensible. No, I'm going to, maybe I'll make it purple, just to, because I don't like that red on the purple background. Um, okay. So I feel, I feel like that's absolutely amazing what we've done there, but I'm now terrified that it's not done enough. because I can't see how to use this. I know that this purple digit is not on this Renban, because remember, if this is a three, this is a seven. So this is going to be one, two, three, four. So this digit goes up here in purple, on, on the purple line. And this is, this is either one, two, three, four, or it's six, seven, eight, nine. don't think I know which. So how do we hmm, try not to sneeze? How do I do this? How do we how do we tie this all together? And the answer to that is I don't know yet. Um, no, I've not got this yet, have I? Come on, Simon. Is it something to do with row four, perhaps, where I've got ones, twos, eights, and nines? No, I've got, and fives, actually, to place. Oh, okay, five in, five's got to go in one of those cells, I think, because I know there's a five on this line. It's not very interesting, is it? This square is one, two, eight, or nine. Let's put that in. Is that somehow... So that digit, whatever it is, goes over here and goes over here. I don't see why that's a problem at all. I have to say... Hmm. Okay. Um... This digit has got to be the other side to this digit. So if this was low, this would have to be high. 
that's 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 not enough is it it's not enough sometimes i can hear the god of history saying that was not enough for i was hungry and ye fed me not that's martin luther king um Dum 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 dum. Oh dear 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 dear. What on earth am I meant to do now, you naughty puzzle? You are perplexing me. Um hmm. I know that. Do I know the relationship between whatever the the digit that's not that's not five is here? and these digits i probably do don't i so if this was three four five that's going to be seven six five okay so that so the digit that's six or four on here finds a home in one of those three cells and finds a home in one of these three cells but That doesn't, I don't think that's going to be interesting enough, is it? How does that relate to this digit? It's the, it's from the opposite set, isn't it? So if this is three, this is one, two, three, four, this is seven. So the six here is going on the top, it's going on the top Renban. So this digit, let's just label this up, i.e. the digit here that's not five, goes in one of those three cells. Oh, hang on, I don't know quite, I've lost my, I've lost my, um, my flash on the, on the yellow thing there. So it goes in one of those. Do we know anything about this? What about the green digit? Is that somehow related to the green digit or is it related to that digit? Or do we not know? We probably don't know, I think. Yeah, because this, yes, whatever this digit is, for, there's a four or six here. It's got to be one of those two digits. Does it, do we care? I mean, obviously we care in the fullness of time, which one it is. But, hmm. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting confused with myself here. Ones and nines are almost getting quite restricted in this box because you can't put one and nine on the between line. I could put one and nine here, probably. But maybe that's meant to be, maybe I'm meant to appreciate somehow that this is a one nine pair. So if that was true, this would be two five eight don't know why that's in any way clever or not so why is this why should i appreciate this is you know this is the natural partner of that one is there a way to do that and the answer is i have not got a clue um if this was two or eight we wouldn't know whether it was high or low. So we don't, I don't think we know which Remban it goes on to. No, that, that feel, this feels wishy-washy. That does not feel like an intelli intelligent sequence of thoughts from me. What about, do I, ah, oh, hang on, that's an interesting thought. So if this was three, four, five, we know that's seven and that's six, five. So the four would go over here, wouldn't it? So this domino either contains a four or a six and forms a sort of four, five, six virtual triple in this box. 
So there is a sort of four or a six in one of those two cells. It's not very interesting for the between line. That's the only problem with that. Hmm. I wonder whether... Do I know where green goes in this box? Is there something... Is that something I'm supposed to appreciate? If yeah, if that was green, then I would know that green was on the lower the lower renban. Oh, it, maybe it can't be on the lower. I'm just wondering if if green I'm not sure. I'm, I haven't quite got my head around whatever Fistmafel has baked into this part of the puzzle. I think we're close. I think we're really close, actually. I just have to figure out how the digits somehow manipulate themselves, don't I? So whatever the digit is on here, which is the four or the six digit, that goes in there. It then goes in one of those. That six is almost interesting. If I go... Hmm, it's really suspicious. I think this is it. I think this is it. I just, I'm not quite sure how to label it. <laughs> I'm going to label. So I've got, I've got my four or six here, which is, I'm, I'm calling my yellow four or six. And we know that the yellow four or six, because it relates to sort of purple, is on the top remban here. Yes, yes, that's it. That's it. Oh, it's this six. Oh, I've done it. Right, sorry, that's taken me far too long. But the the critical thing, and it's um, um, do I forgive myself? No, of course I don't. I don't forgive myself. But I do think I've finally understood something here. So the key is. Can you put the four or the six that you know is on this between line on the top Renban here? Because by Sudoku, the four or the six that's down here, let's let's imagine that's a no, I've got orange already in the grid. Let's imagine it's a um I might have to use red. So that this red refers to the four or the six that's on this Renban line. Now that meets a friend here by Sudoku because this can't be a four or a six and this is the different flavor of four or six to the one that's on this Renban. So it lives in here somewhere. One of those squares is the red four or six, which means the red four or six lives in one of those two cells. Now, if it was up here, then this Renban, this top Renban would contain the yellow four six and the red four six, which are either side of the digit five. So that Remban should have a five on it, but it doesn't. So this digit is red. And if this digit is red, it can't be six. So it is four, which means that this is not got six on it. This has not got six on it, which means it's not got seven on it. This has become three, four, five. This is what this, this is what this digit is doing. I think now this can't be seven. We know that this is three because we know that these squares are the one, two, three, four quadruple. We know these squares are the six, seven, eight, nine quadruple. We know, we know that's become a seven. So this has got to be um, five and six. We know, well, do we know anything else? We know that's not seven, look. So we know that we need sixes, eights, and nine. Oh, the six, the six in this column has suddenly mutated into the top of the grid, which makes that four, that four, that six, which means these squares have become seven, eight. It's possible. It's, oh, do I want to say this? No, I'm going to say it. It's possible we've just broken the back of this. It really is. This is an eight, nine pair, the, oh, which means that's not eight and nine now. So these are one, two, and four. Oh, okay. Look, 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 look. What can we not put on this little line? The digit one. So that's got to be a one. That's got to be a nine. That's got to be a nine. That makes this an eight, which we could have seen in a variety of other ways. But suddenly, 
things are looking up. Um, come on, that's not nine. Come on, come on, Simon. This is now a two, four pair. All right, so one of those has got to be a one because we know there's a two on the between line. Okay, six here, six here. There's a six in one of these three cells. Um, there's no, oh, there's no more sixes on this top line now. So this line is made up of sevens, eights, and nines. It's definitely a nine in one of those two cells by Sudoku. This has got to be the top side, doesn't it, of uh, five. So this has got to be seven or eight only. And it sees a seven or eight here. So there's a seven, eight pair in row two. Um, do we know? Yes, we do. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. If we have a look now at this situation in this box, we know one of these rem bands is one, two, three, and the other is five, six, seven. Now we can't put six on this lower one anymore by Sudoku. So that top one has got to be five, six, seven. And therefore we can do that. This is a five, seven pair, which we know the order of using the seven down here, which means that's a seven, which means this is an eight. It feels like it's an arrow clue all of a sudden. and I should be able to get more out of it, but no, I can't. Um, these squares are ones, twos and threes, which surely is doing something. Do we know what those squares are? We must do. They are, yeah, the blue digits are the high digits. So this is seven, eight, nine. We've got roping down this column, look. So there's got to be a five here. Um, can we do more than that? Possibly, I don't know. Yeah, okay, where does one go in this box? It can't go on the line, so this has become a one five pair, which is rather nice, which means this is a one. This is a two three pair. This one gives me a one over here, it gives me a two, gives me a two, give me a three. There's still a chance for a three in the corner. These squares here are seven and nine by Sudoku, I want to say. These two squares are four and five by Sudoku. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. And this is going to be a one, two, three triple, which that we know is not a one because of the one that's got to live on this line. This line is now made up of two and three. OK, so now now there's a one in one of those two squares as well to frame the two, which means that's not a one. This is a one by Sudoku. Got an X wing on ones here, which is useful. So that, what do I mean by an X wing on ones? Well, uh, I know that, um, what's the right way to describe this? How many, uh, how many ones do we think there are going to be in this row? The answer, hopefully you will tell me, is one. How many ones do I think are going to be in that what row? The answer, hopefully you will tell me, is one. So I know in these two rows together, there are two ones altogether. But I also know, if you look at these columns, there's definitely a one in one of those two squares, and there's definitely a one in one of those two squares. So the two ones that I said have to exist in these two rows, I know are in those four squares. So I can't have another one here. If that was a one, it's going to be a third one in two rows of the grid. And I can't have three ones in two rows without having a terminal problem with my Sudoku. Uh, so that's five, so that's five, that's six. Um, now, now what? Well, now I suppose I pencil mark the bottoms here, do I? I've got two, oh, I've got two, three, four here. Yeah, okay, because I've got roping. I've got two, three, four, and one, five, six. And this little Remban has to be consecutive, so that can't be six because it can't have five next to it. Um, and that can't be three because one and five are not consecutive with three. So this is the even number. This is the odd number in this consecutive pair. This can't be a one because obviously you can't put zero into the circles. So this is five or six. 
Um, hmm. Okay, one second while we work out what's going on. What are those digits now? We know they, they are 2, 5 and 8, don't we? Which is not quite resolved. Hmm. Okay. Uh, there is a six in one of those two squares by Sudoku. So this Renban, the sort of, how do I see that? Is that the forehead or the smile of the Joker? This is has got a six on it. So it's not got any digits more extreme than eight. It could be six, seven, eight. Can it, oh, can it have five on it? Only in one place. Ooh, nearly. Uh, and it could go down to be four, five, six. So it's not got ones, twos, and threes on it. Okay, what's this digit? Because that's on the between line. It can't be one. So that, it, ah, okay, yes. Look, this digit is at least a six. And it can't be a nine because we can't put 10 into either of those. So that is six or eight, which means one of these has to be higher than that. Which means there's a virtual, right, if we look at those three digits together, there's got to be a seven nine pair in those three digits. Because one of these circles needs to contain a digit higher than six. And that digit can't be an eight. So there's a seven or a nine in one of those, which goes with that cell. Yeah, okay, the way to think about that is that's the options for these two squares are only one, seven, and nine now. So there's actually a one, seven, nine triple in this column, which must do some work. Two, three, four, five, and six. So that square. It's, well, I was going to say it's two, three, four, five, or six, but it's clearly not all those things. It's not five. And given there's a six on this Renban, it can't be two and it can't be three. Because three, four, five, six would take a four cell Renban. So this is four or six again. Uh, I thought we were going to be able to, I thought we were going to be able to color, but I'm suddenly realizing I've resolved all my fours and sixes that I previously thought might have been uh, amenable to coloring. Okay, so I feel we're getting there. It's another long video, but it's Fistimafel, so forgive me for that. Um, one in this column is in one of two places. So if we put one on the line, that would be a two, but I can't see why that's impossible. That would be really useful, actually, if this is a one. All right, what about this column then? Twos, sevens, eights, and nines. Two, seven, eight, nine. Can we do something clever with this? Mm, I want to say no. <laughs> um, what's the, what's this? Oh yes, okay. We should do the set. We should use avail ourselves of symmetry. We were able to lock these two digits to be include a quite a high digit this is a bit less good than that one this is five or six so this is at least six well assuming it's on the high digit it could still be the one of course this digit is either one six seven eight or nine that must be the resolvable somehow I mean, that's really bad, actually. This this digit's really recalcitrant. Um, I don't see what to do with that. And this one, this one, all we know about is that it's on a Renban with a six. So the minimum it is is four. And the maximum it is is eight. So four, five, seven, and eight. I'm missing a trick here, I think. I think there's going to be an easier way of of plotting a way through this puzzle. I'm not I'm not being very clever about right where does three go in that row? It seems to only go there. 
which is not lovely, except it didn't give me a three in the corner. But I also rather fear... But it's not done. It's not done a great deal. Oh, cool. Here's okay. Here's an interesting point. Actually, that is interesting. That can't be a four. Because because I know one of those is a six. If that was a four, I'd have to put five on the Renban where I can't put it. So if there is a five on the Renban, it's only able to be there. Right. And that means four in this row is also restricted. It can only go here. So that's got to be four. Oh, botheration two. <laughs> this row is weird. This row is absolutely weird. Where does two go in this row now? That's really clever. It's really clever. So these, these little between line thingies seem to stop twos appearing really anywhere in row seven. So that's got to be two, which means this digit's going to be the key, isn't it? Because it's got to be consecutive with two and it's not three. So that's one. Aha! Which means, ah, uh, this is five. I've suddenly realised I had a four here, so I could have put that five in before, but that's now a six. So this can't be six. That's got to be eight. That's huge because that means I've got to put nine in one of those. So this has now become a one nine pair. That's become a seven. That's become a nine. This is not nine anymore by Sudoku. Um, um, come on. This is not eight anymore by Sudoku. This is not eight or more by Sudoku. So that's not eight or more <laughs> by Sudoku. Right, I've now got a one seven nine triple in row seven. So that's five which is probably not the thing we wanted it to be. Actually, oh, actually, no, it does some things at the top. Five and four go into the grid. So this digit now is either the low one or it's higher than six. So it's one, seven or eight. Whoops which I think might mean I've got to put a four on this Renban, but let me just check this digit first. It's not eight. I've got eight in one of those squares. Right, so I've got a one seven pair here and a one nine pair here. So I've got a one seven eight nine quadruple in row in row five. So two, three and four. So this digit is not two, there's a two in one of those, and it's not four, that's a three in the middle of the grid. That feels like that should earn a song, which means that's three, that's two, that's two, that's four. But also, look, the four here has to live in one of the Renban edges, which I know also had to include a six. So this Renban is, is a four, five, six Renban. And this square is a seven, eight, or a nine. And it's not an eight. So this is a seven or a nine. That gives me a one, seven, nine, triple here. Ah, it's still not done. Um, this maverick I can hear comes hovering past the window. Um, that digit's known, isn't it? That's a six by Sudoku. That's an eight. That's a nine. That digit's a one by Sudoku. So it's all going to come down to this 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 funny little Renban at the bottom, I suspect. Can we, can we find a way to do this with some sort of alacrity? I'm not sure. Right. Pregnant pause while I try and figure out what it is I'm meant to look at. There's no, okay, there's no five on this Renban. And one of those digits is a one, isn't it? So the question is, can this be a two, three, four Renban? And the answer is, I fear it can. Ow! Botheration. Five is knocked out of that square, though. So now it can't be a two, three, four Renban. Aha! Right. So if this was... It's right to say one of these is a one, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, so so this Renban is either 
digits below 5, in which case it's 2, 3, 4, but I don't think you can put a 4 anywhere on it. So it's digits higher than 5, which means it's 6, 7, 8, and 9, which means it's got to... No, it's well, it's got to have 7 and 8 on it. Yes, that's it, isn't it? It's got to have 7 and 8 on it, look. And those that cell cannot be 7 and 8, so this is a 7, 8 pair. And that digit is 6 or 9. No, no, no. Yeah, no, that's done. There's a 1, 9 pair. Okay, so that is 6. Which means that's 6 and that's 4. Uh, oh, and the 1, 7 pair sorts the ordering of the 8 and the 7, which is going to do the bottom of the grid. Right, finally, finally have we done this. That 7 does the 1, the 9, the 7 here. This is a 9. This is a 2 by Sudoku. 3, 2. These squares have got to be 4 and 3. It looks good, actually. It looks good because those are the digits missing both from the row and the box which suggests we haven't made any boo-boos on the sudoku front nine eight eight seven one seven uh, this is eight by sudoku um the, the three and the two at the top get resolved by the three at the bottom which makes this five and that two and i think that is how to solve an absolutely brilliant puzzle wow it's another tricky one that one that one is tricky you've got to really really concentrate hard on how, the, how these little red bands work together there is some absolutely fascinating stuff to do with these well it was sort of to do with it's these types of digits and i loved the fact well i loved the fact firstly i could get this blue digit to be in that cell that felt absolutely magical but then over on this side you can do something very similar with this cell and proving it can't be extreme that felt magical then i got really stuck because i couldn't see how the imp i couldn't really it's a puzzle that mm, i keep starting sentences and not stopping them not finishing them it's a puzzle that if you sort of almost bifurcated it if you just used digits as placeholders and say when we got to the point where we knew one of these was extreme and one of them was next to extreme and you just filled in either nine eight or one two and then just tried to do the puzzle from there i think it would have been very much clearer that these digits had a mirror here which was in the, which has turned out to be a four but could, could at the point i was looking at it have been a six and that that digit couldn't exist on that top rem band that was the key thing i had to i missed is i couldn't see um where the red digit was in this box and it was only once i thought harder about whether it could go on the top rem band i realized it went here and then we realized about the dramatic effect of the given six the butterfly effect indeed I mean, it's a great name not just because it looks a bit like a butterfly but because you get these unexpected consequences you sort of do a bit of logic over here and it ends up having an effect over here and vice versa it, i mean it's this is what this mfl is all about all about just making quite extraordinary puzzles for us to enjoy i hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comments i enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and maybe i'll see you later for some harry potter bye for now